Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to read you a book. So this book is going to be about a snake. So here it is. Da -da 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 -da. Birdie by Janelle Cannon. So, do you guys remember there's one more book from this author? Can you guess what it is? Alright, think. Pause the video and think. All right, here's the answer. It's Stella Luna. That book is about a fruit bat that eats fruits. So I hope you'll like this book too. So let's get started. Birdie by Janelle Cannon, creator of Stella Luna. On a small tropical island, the sun rose high above the steamy jungle. A mother python was sending her hatchlings out into the forest the way all mother pythons do. Grow up big and green, as green as the tree's leaves. She called to her little yellow babies as they happily scattered among the trees. But Verdi dawdled. He was proudly eyeing his bright yellow skin. He especially liked the bold stripes that zigzagged down his back. Why the hurry to grow up big and green, he wondered. Maybe some of the older snakes in the jungle could tell him. Verdi ventured into the treetops to look for them. Umbles, Aggie, and Ribbon were lazing on some branches nearby. Verdi peered at their droopy green bodies. It's not polite to stare chided Aggie. Umbles burped and groaned. It's taken nearly four weeks for that last lizard to digest. I surely do like lizards, but lizards don't like me. Why don't lizards like you? asked Verdi. Don't interrupt, Umbles grumbled. Dear me! whined Aggie. If I don't shed soon, this itchy skin will drive me bananas. Verdi tapped a tune with his tail as he waited to speak. Stop that, Verdi. It makes me nervous, Ribbon complained. Besides, you'll never grow up to be properly green, always interrupting and constantly fidgeting. Verdi couldn't imagine being in such a hurry to be like them, and he really wanted to keep his sporty stripes. Hoping to find snakes that weren't so boring, Verdi slipped away. Dozer was snoring in a tree not far from the others. Hello, said Verdi. Do you want to climb trees with me? I'm tired, Dozer growled. Go do a few laps around the jungle, okay? Verdi's heart sank. Greens were not only lazy and boring, they were rude. At the top of a very tall tree, Verdi gripped one branch with his tail and another with his little snake jaws. I will never be lazy, boring or green. He thought, I will jump and climb and keep moving so fast that I will stay yellow and striped forever. Then Verdi let go. From a distance, the greens watched. Oh my, they chorused. Ribbon shook his head. At this rate, he'll be lucky to make it to his first molt. Aggie nodded likely to put an eye out on a branch, Umbles moaned. He may not live to turn green. But one day, Verdi's skin began to peel, revealing a pale green stripe stretching along his whole body. Yuck! He gasps. How can this be? I'm the speediest snake in the jungle and I'm still turning green. 
he raced down to the river, grabbing up a mouthful of rough leaves. Ferdy flung himself into the water. If I can run this green off, I'll scrub it off, he thought. His frantic splashing caught the eye of a large bun feeder cruising the murky depths. Yum, the old fish hummed, lunch. Before the fish could haul Ferdy under, the frightened snake bit him on the nose. A poo! With a blast of his rubbery lips, the great fish sneezed, sending Ferdy into the air, slapping onto the soggy shore. Ferdy skidded out of reach. Phew, that was close, he sputtered. Every inch of his body was covered with wet, gloppy mud. Hmm, kind of lumpy, kind of brown. It sure beats being green. He left the mud on. But the soft brown muck dried into a hard gray shell and Verdi could barely move. If he even budged, the stuff cracked off in jagged chunks. As each piece fell away, Verdi could see that his body was even greener than before. This is terrible, cried Verdi. He pictured himself hanging around in droopy loops, itching and complaining and worrying all day like the old greens. He looked up into the sky where the sun blazed a beautiful yellow, just the color he used to be. Then he pulled a vine to the top of the tree. Launching himself from the treetop, Verdi startled a flock of colorful birds. He became dizzy with delight. Sure, the bright sun and his lofty speed would turn him golden again. In his joy, Verdi forgot he would fall back to earth. Whipty, whopty, whip, flap, ram. Plummeting through the trees, Verdi landed in a crooked sprawl across a log on the forest floor. He couldn't move. Help! He croaked. As usual, the greens had been watching Verdi's antics. They moved quickly to where he lay. Didn't we say it would come to this? Humboldt said, shaking his head. Aggie sighed. Lucky thing, you still got two good eyes. They gently lifted Verdi up to a safer place where they could watch over him while he healed. Neatly splinted to a branch, Verdi had no choice but to listen to the greens as they gabbed. Remember how I used to streak across the forest floor? Rim asked. Quick as lightning, answered Aggie, and I climbed giant trees like they were nothing. They grew taller than, you know, the things I dare to run down and swallow, Humboldt bragged, while boar were no match for me. Bertie was astonished. You used to run and climb and hunt giant pigs? What happened? Rim crashed, just like you, Aggie replied. I took a terrible fall and almost put an eye out. Then old Umbles here nearly choked to death. Now we all prefer the quiet life. A warm perch, a little sunshine, and an occasional good meal. The greens rambled on about their days of glory, and Bertie settled in on his branch. Finally, one afternoon, Umble said, Looks like you are ready to go again. He carefully untied Verdi from the branch. You are welcome to come with us, said Aggie. Rim agreed. The three greens slipped quietly back into the forest. 
Bertie wasn't ready to join them. He wasn't sure where he wanted to go, so he just stretched and stayed put until the sun went down. He listened to the forest come alive. Time passed. The sun and moon took turns in the sky. Birdie marveled as the full moon grew thinner every night. Then he watched patiently as it slowly grew round again. He wondered why he hadn't noticed that before. Birdie became so green that he blended perfectly with the leaves. He was so still that other creatures walked right by without seeing him. One fine morning, as Birdie basked in the sunshine, two small yellow snakes approached. They tapped and fidgeted as they stared. Get a load of that old green guy, one of them whispered. Do you think he ever moves? The other snickered. I seriously dubbed it. They're just like I used to be, thought Bertie, and I'm now what I was afraid to be. He looked at his big green body and slowly smiled. How would you like to climb trees with me? He asked. With you? The yellows were astounded. I'll even show you my fancy figure eight, Birdie replied, though he was a little worried about putting his eye out. But practice, the three snakes performed a perfect triple figure eight. Leaping and looping with his little striped friends, Birdie laughed. I may be big and very green, but I'm still me. The End So I hope you like this book. So if you like this book, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye-bye, everyone. See you in the next video.